Thank you, Madam Chairman, and uh, I, I do appreciate your holding this hearing, and um, I would say that as the ranking member of the Commerce Committee, uh, I have invited the administrator uh, to come to a hearing next week where others have been invited but have been told that the administrator is not available. And um, I hope, um, Madam Chairman, that that changes, uh, General Bolden, because uh, I think after uh, the incredible consequences of the President's decision that uh, I would ask you to be available. Um, uh, Senator, may I inquire the, the day, time, and date of the hearing? Uh, April 28th at what time? 2.30? Perhaps the Senator, uh, Administrator Bolden's able staff could check it while we're engaging in this question. Madam Senator, I think there may be some confusion or lack of communications between your office and mine. It was my understanding that we had moved the hearing to the 12th of May and I was going to be there because I'm, I'm scheduled to be at the Johnson Space Center uh, on, the, on the day of the hearing that you originally scheduled, but we'll, we'll resolve the issue. Thank you. Um, General Bolden, I, I, I read your testimony, I've heard your testimony, I've heard the President's speech, and it just doesn't all come together. And I will say that I was one who uh, was very supportive of your nomination for the reasons that others have stated because I knew that you would be committed to the missions of NASA and uh, would understand it and would be a great leader. But I am concerned about a very mixed message. The President says that he's committed to science. I don't see how you can have a commitment to science but not a commitment to having humans in space. Um, at the same time, because the space station is right now uh, one of the key areas of science. There are others, the Hubble, which I support completely, and uh, all of the other scientific missions, but the space station is the future. Congress and the President have embraced extending the space station uh, till 2020, but we have not assured that we can get people there. And I know you said that it isn't a change that the Russians were tasked with putting people in the space station, but it was always envisioned, in my estimation, that American shuttles would be going to the space station. For one thing, you, you, you have to make sure that you have the equipment. Uh, the second thing is you need to make sure that if there are repairs or uh, something that you might need in the future that you have the maximum capability. We were never going to have a gap in the beginning. Now, the gap started coming, of course, because, uh, frankly, uh, I think NASA has been starved throughout several administrations. So um, I think that you are, are going to have to work with us, I hope, in a constructive way. Yes, ma'am toward keeping people in space and keeping American um, uh, control over our own destiny. Uh, the emphasis to the tune of $6 billion into a very fledgling commercial uh, capability, I just think is not sound and it's certainly not going to be reliable. Uh, they are very short. Uh, I mean, uh, it was even said that uh, you, you have all of the expenses of closing down a contract, but then we're going to have to have new contracts. So l let me just say that I am um, skeptical and very disappointed that we would have a goal of keeping science in the forefront but no plan to keep people involved in that effort under American control and under the control of NASA. I think we are too heavily relying in the President's plan on commercial capabilities, which we had a hearing in Commerce Committee, we had the leaders of the commercial, the two commercial space or, uh, operations. They are, uh, in my opinion, opinion, I attended the hearing, not ready for this kind of uh, reliance 
And I don't think we can take that kind of chance. So let me just uh, ask you the questions that I can. If the Russian Soyuz has an accident or something happens uh, that uh, the crew return vehicle uh, it isn't operable, what if you had the accident and it grounded the Soyuz for an extended period of time and we don't have our own reliable efforts? Or, I would ask you, how long would it take before the six-person crew that would still be aboard the International <laughs> Space Station at certain points would have to evacuate using two of the Soyuz vehicles that just experienced a critical failure, assuming the failure occurred on descent? I mean, what are your plans here? Senator, I, I, I'm going to try to suppose, I'm, I'm going to try to, to understand the scenario you're placing. If, if that scenario takes place uh, between now and 2015 with the existing program of record, Constellation, um, after shuttle is retired in September or whenever we fly our last mission, we have no way to get Americans or anyone else um, to the station. We have two vehicles on station. We would be able to get the six-person crew home, but that would terminate all use of the International Space Station. Um, the Constellation program was not going to provide that capability. The, the, the gap that you refer to actually began in 2004, probably began even before then. But when the vision for space exploration was given and then not funded sufficiently, the gap began to materialize and grow and grow and grow. Um, as Senator Voinovich mentioned, one of my primary drivers in recommending to the President what I did was I could not responsibly ask him to put the nation into even more debt by putting the amount of money into Constellation that would have been required for us to try to catch it up. And in fact, we still would not have been able to, to gain that gap. M money can do a lot of things. It would not have been able to close the gap appreciably. So we were, we were looking at about 2015 before we would have a domestic NASA built with industry capability to get humans to space. Well, General Bolden, the uh, starving of NASA started before 2004. Oh, yes, ma'am. I agree. In, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I agree. It's been starved yes. for over 20 years. Um, and so I, we don't need to place blame so much as we need to address the issue. And Yes, ma'am. I agree. And I am concerned, first of all, uh, I think we need to go forward with the Constellation or the, the next generation. If, if skipping from Aries 1 to Aries 1X or Aries 5 uh, is necessary, I'm not committed to the Constellation, but I am committed to uh, the Constellation mission, yes, which is people to and from the space station. And uh, with all due respect, I think we ought to be looking at uh, not adding to the number of shuttles, but delaying the time frame. That would bridge a gap, and it can be done if all of us work together without an additional budget over and above what the President is asking. It is reworking the budget that the President has said is the budget. But if we had uh, over two or three years the same number of space shuttles so that you have the ability to assess and uh, use the Soyuz in between to take people to and from, uh, I think that would be a much more innovative approach and it would give us more of the filling in of the gap for emergencies or for the scientific uh, 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 capabilities at the same time that we are developing our own constellation type uh, operation. So I hope that, that we can work on uh, something that would, would not say we're going to be closed down in September and 2015 would be the first time. In fact, in your own testimony, you said that we would be able, under the President's plan, which you're supporting, to uh, put humans into space uh, early in the next decade. Well, I'm assuming that since this is 2010, you're talking about 2020. That's early in the next decade. Um, I, perhaps I, m I 
didn't make myself clear that under the President's budget and his vision, um, we will have humans going beyond low Earth orbit in 2020 or 20, very short, shortly after that. Uh, I have just selected a class of astronauts um, in this past year who were brought on strictly to, to uh, occupy and, and operate the International Space Station. So in, in terms, in, in reference to your, your concern about science, we now have the capability with a fully uh, occupied International Space Station to do incredible science. And, and thanks to the President uh, recommending that we, and funding, providing the funds to extend the International Space Station to 2020 and beyond, we now know that we're going to have 10 more years of human occupation and science being done on station. I know that my time is up. Let me finish with just the last direct question, and that is the Soyuz has an accident, and we can't get there for two years or three. How can the station survive? How, can, how oh. is that possible? Ma'am, the, the International the Space Station use it. will, as I said, it, it, in, the, in the scenario that you mentioned in today's environment with the program of record, unfortunately, because we allowed this gap to grow, there is no way uh, to do what you and I both want to do. We, we, will be, we, are, we will be single string uh, once the shuttle uh, stops flying. So I think it, we, can we will be it. just like we were after the Columbia accident I for a couple of years. I think we can fix it, General Bolden. Yes, and a couple of years would be okay. Five, seven, ten is not okay. Yes, and I hope that I all of the senators that are interested in this will work with you, with the administration. I think we can do better than this. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Generally. Thank you, Senator Hutchinson. Um, there are many more questions. Yes, um, but Mr. Frost has been quite patient. It is now 11.30.